I'll think I'll think of something. Okay. All right. So then we're we're officially kind of moving into this next phase. Thank you for those of you that are not staying. Uh, we're just gonna go over some beginner logic stuff. So okay, let's transition officially. Hey guys, what's up? All right. So Mags, <laughs> you want to go into the? Do you want to go into the drum machine designer or what? What are your questions? Yeah. Uh, no. Let's. Uh, I don't know. You're open. I guess. Okay. Could we? Could we? <laughs> could we take it from the beginning? Like I'm opening up a logic session and I'm going here and pressing this, and this is how I'm starting. Um, I feel like I always miss some steps in that way. Let's do it. Let me open it. Let me start a new session. Not this one. So just the like super 101, how do you open up a track and this, these kinds of things, right? Uh, as far as just like opening it up, going to the where you scroll down to the drum designer and yeah okay so here's a track um okay. and i'm gonna locate drum machine designer remember that it's it's not an instrument it's you know it's it's like another i don't know why they do this stuff you know again when i'm in charge i'm literally gonna put it right here it's gonna say drum machine designer because mm. i don't know you know when i was a beginner i would i'm not kidding you cry because it was so challenging to me. Mm -hmm. you know, why don't they make this easy for somebody that just started that I could never get that question answered? And they do super confusing things. Like for example, you see right here where it says external MIDI? This is for people that have like, like a uh, synthesizer or external like pros, you know, like super pro level stuff where you know what, what you're doing. But when you're a beginner and you just want to get a piano sound, and you select this, it's a nightmare. Cause now it's like, it looks like a, here, let, let me show you real quick. It looks like a piano and you're like, it's not working. Like I see it's the sounds coming out. Right. So anyway, that gets frustrating, but anyway, uh, you go instrument, right. Um, and then you go into drum machine designer and it's right there. That's, this is where you have to locate it. Um, I wonder if you could find it in the library. I don't know. Let me see. Drum machine. No. So there you go. You're kind of stuck with it. Um, and now the purpose of, of a, a DMD drum, mach drum machine designer is to create a drum rack or, or a construction kit. Let me, let me show you, um, what it would look like with logic. And then like, if you go to splice or whatever, right? So like, all right, cool. Um, I want this. Kit. And then on this pad, and am I covering what you want to cover? I just want to make sure. Are we yeah. Are you just, are you just clicking them? Are you right? Like, what are you doing? Literally, I'm just clicking that right there. And then now it's, it's, it's in key focus. It's ready to accept information. So I got a kick and it's uh, currently uh, the input is on C1 and the output is on C1. So, you, so if I hit C1, you're going to hear it. Right. But then on this one, I want a, a rim, right. Or something else. So let's click on a rim. Right, and so then now I have this kick. I'm gonna click on this icon, and then I got on this. Right, so that makes sense. Um, I think this rim is too high pitched. Right, I don't think it's the right sound. So I'm going to filter out some of that high end. There we go. Yeah. Now, real quick, would you be able to do this the same way with like an MPD? So when they would just um, if like that was your, if you weren't using like a MIDI board, you were using like a, um, is that something, would that be different? You want to MPD, you mean MPC, my tripod? A drum machine? Yes. Okay, so so say the question again, because I, that, that, that. Would you, would you be able to do the same thing? Like if that was what was hooked up as like your. Oh, your MIDI controller. Yeah, yeah. the controller. Yeah, because all, yeah. all that stuff is just MIDI, right? I have one right here, so a machine. So basically, you just, you're creating a, a, a drum machine for yourself, a, a pattern, a, you know, a patch. You're just making your own. Rather than, you know how we select, like, we're like, hey, I want a kit. And we always, like, let them make decisions for us. This is, like, you making decisions, creative decisions of, like, actually, this is my sound. This is, you know. I don't want your patches and it's not a bad thing. I mean, it's good to have those ideas, but artistically speaking, it's a lot more gratifying to put your thoughts on, on paper and to have it be yours. Right. Yeah. 
So uh, again, we can go and create the whole thing, but this is really just the gist of it. Um, let's choose another snare. This time I don't want a, a rim. I just want, you know, something. Uh, fine. Well, so there it is right there. Um, and what's great is we can actually change the order of these. Let's say you wanted this one there, right? So then now that's cool. Um, let me see. And it, uh, from what I understand, it also changes the mapping. Let me see. Let me just, yeah. So it actually literally changes the MIDI mapping for you. That didn't happen in the past. So this is new tech. Really nice. Um, so construction kit, uh, you can manipulate the various uh, parameters, right? Um, they basically copied Ableton. I mean, that's really what 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 this was was they they needed a way to be more efficient and sample stuff quickly, which it wasn't their strong suit before. But now it's like super powerful. Um, so yeah, then uh, we can take third party material as well so let me see if i could find something for you really quick i'm gonna go into my browser and logic here uh, i've got a bunch of phenomenal loops by my favorite uh hip-hop company initial audio so let's just say i want to grab a bunch of um let's go with melodic loops why not then i'm gonna grab all these actually why don't i just do like 10 the extremists right i'm always all right here we go we're gonna drag them in and then boom it's just gonna auto populate from what I remember. Yeah, there we go. Um, it's loading, right? So now I just hit all of them at the same time. So that, that was not a good look, but the idea would be to then, they're still playing, would be to um, to get these to choke. Um, so let me show you what that looks like. Still playing, sorry. Let me see. Click on this guy and then um there's a feature here which basically allows them to choke They're still playing <laughs> maybe i shouldn't have chosen loops oops uh let me see there's there's definitely a way to get them to choke i'm just not seeing it right now zoom no not that guy not that guy uh it looks like it's not here it's in the other one though in the actual quick sampler yeah i don't see any question eddie um if you would have third party like samples inside in your kit do you have to save them like specifically or do they say like save them in there by themselves no nah, no nah. if you don't if you don't go ahead and save this so like right here i'm gonna hit save in the library yeah and then you create you know alina's amazing drum patch right because otherwise oh. it's not gonna remember it it's, it's not gonna know okay. where to reference it because these All right, so that that's when you open up the project and it's like yeah i can't we don't know where your sounds are at Exactly, because these right here yeah. are are, are um, externally on another sample, on another a hard yeah. drive, and so then it, it doesn't know how to reference. Now, if you save everything okay. properly, it should work still, but why risk it? You have to save it every single time. You it do, doesn't auto-save. Um, you know what? I'm not sure, but okay. I wouldn't risk it. No. <laughs> I would file save it. And then, yeah. no, that makes sense. Here, let, let me uh, show you my whole screen real quick. So you you know this this whole window. Mm -hmm. Always save with folder and always include all these files. If you're not using movies, okay, you could let up on that one. But yeah. see how it has sampler audio data. So th these are all your samplers, your samples rather, ultra okay. right. So yeah, um, I'm pretty sure you could just get away with it like this, but it is technology, so just be careful. I know, but I, I find myself just like thinking that it auto saves and then I open the product up and it's not there. Yeah, so that, so then you know what yeah. I'm talking about. Yeah, I don't see a choke feature. It's weird. Um, oh, but you can mute and you can solo right there. Okay, I'm done with that choke thing. Um, anything else right here for you, uh, Mags? I just, uh, just want to know creatively where, where you want to go with this. No, I think, yeah, I think that was, it. I think that was, that was also really cool that you, it's like obvious that you could load other, you could load like melodic loops, but and, just my, my brain was just thinking like specific. Oh, of course. Yeah. Know, sounds and instruments, but yeah, you could, you could load actual loops in there too. This is unprecedented. And here's why this is cool. Okay. So listen to this. Um, hold on. Uh, Jeez. 
I wonder why it doesn't stop. Hold on, let me just. Okay. Yeah, that's weird. I can't. I can't. Oh, wait a minute. Let me see if I can do this. Okay. Okay, that is a strange distinction. So, so look, I had track number two highlighted and selected, yeah? And I was trying to stop it, but it couldn't because it wasn't in focus. But now trip on this. If I select it from here, though, now it's doing what I want it to do because it's selected. So that, mm, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like that behavior, right? Because that's, it's not clear. Uh, but anyway, I'm playing with this loop right here and I have it in classic mode because you can change like how you want this to play back and why this is important because now you can create stuff like this so the original sounds like this right so now I'm gonna play this and I'm gonna change um, the sampling so it's gonna sound something like this all from this original Right. This is why it's important because they wanted to dominate the sampling market, which is like really what's kind of happening right now. Everybody just samples everything. Um, now remember, there's a couple different samplers. You've got the classic, the one which is basically as long as I'm holding it down, playing. If I let go, then it's not playing. Uh, one shot means it's going to play the whole way through, so I'm not going to play that one. But then slice is interesting because now I can sample the sample, if that makes sense. Check it out. All right, so there you go. Um, if you hit that, basically as soon as you stop playing. And so, so this is really cool now because I've taken this initial idea I've set it in slice mode, and now this is all inside a drum machine designer, and now we're playing something like. Really cool and innovative and interesting. You know, we can all say that. Not me, it, just to be clear. Um, so yeah, that's really cool. And then on top of that, sorry, if, this, if that wasn't enough, you can record yourself playing beats in here, which is insane. You know, you could beatbox or... <sighs> like you know old beatles percussion stuff that they, they originated this like doing sounds with your mouth to make it a percussion like basically what timberland made famous the beatles were doing like way back when and um it's just it's a whole nother world now it's a whole another universe so really cool stuff do you, you guys want me to go over this or what's next eddie uh how did you how did you load that sample in there again okay yeah i literally just dragged it you just dragged um, it yeah, and, and here's here's what's crazy. Not only can you do third-party loops, which I, I just showed you, I could just take one of these guys from from the loop browser. Let's just say, uh, I don't know, this one. And I'm going to drag it in here. Let's add it right there. All right, cool. It's going to convert it to audio. And let me just find that key. Did it matter which, which one you drag it into? No. Uh, hold on. Let me just get this thing under control. Uh, this wow. okay, there it is right there. Uh, let me put that gate mode. It's under slice. Okay. So, yeah, the, the first one started off here, Eric. Okay. That's how it started, and now we have this. Um, it's like a dance song. So, it's, uh, it's just bananas. I mean, it's just another universe. You know? well, how do you take and use? How do you take and use that? And you could you put that on the track, and then you just hit record, just like you'd normally hit record, and you can record something. Here we go. Okay. And then, of course, you would quantize all that, yeah, because it's not. How gonna... do you? Yeah, I was going to say the piano roll, because that's how you were. How were you writing it before? Wasn't that? Oh, I was using what's called the step sequencer. Yeah. So in Logic, there's there's two formats to write when it comes to um, software instruments or MIDI. You can use 
this, the traditional piano, we've been using this since 1983. Okay. Um, and then now there's the pattern format. Which one should I use? Well, it just depends what you're writing, to be honest. So well, I could the one that you were using before had like the options that had like the pattern step length, the pattern step yeah. rate, all so, the attributes. Yeah. You, like the one to use, right? Yeah. So it just depends on how you're going to write. Um, like, for example, that song that I made in the assignment, which I need to post, um, it's uh, oh, you can only write like that inside of step sequencers. It, you know what I'm saying? It sounds very, everything sounds very like not like robotic, I guess, would be the right terminology for it. But you can't get that sound if you just try and write it with MIDI like this. It's not the, it's not the same world, you know. Um, so I think they, they each have their own applications. Like if I'm going to play like, you know, piano chords, I'm, I'm probably not going to use this because I want the dynamics and the expressiveness and the flexibility of MIDI, right? Like how do, where do I want the sustain pedal to hit and things like that? Whereas here, this is just like fun, right? How do I want this to play out? This is like a, a video game almost. I mean, listen to It sounds like, it sounds like a different genre, right? This, you wouldn't say, oh, this is like R&B or something. Like, it's quite clear that this is dance or whatever, you know? And it would be, believe it or not, so difficult to write something that simple in here. <laughs> it would be so like, like hard to sequence it and put it together so it sounds natural. Um, so anyway, uh, two formats. If, okay yeah, yeah thank you yeah, yeah let me know if there's any more questions just to be clear like are you clear that this is midi uh, or i'm sorry the piano roll and this is like a, another format i mean yeah yeah that, i i get that yeah this it's, it's a lot lot to take in so i'm i'm good i'm it's a lot I'm to happy. give out <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm sure <laughs> Eddie. It's a lot to give out. what's up <laughs> yeah so what do you call that thing that your mouse is about to click out of what do you call that that thing that's uh well, the drum machine designer this. Drum machine designer. Um, so, how do you load? Uh, you just drag and drop the when you when you load the drum de de designer. Mm -hmm. You just uh, to get your different your snare and your kick and hi hats and all that. You just you just drag and drop those in there when it because because it's blank when you first open it. Yeah, yeah. So so there's there's a couple ways you can drag in third party Apple Loops or if you hit Y, you can go ahead and access Logic stock samples. Okay. Here. So like, let's just say I want this sound. You just, you see how it it's instantiated right away. So now I'm going to click on this pad right here, Eric, and then let's select a clap. And boom, there it is right there. Now, if I wanted to add an instrument, uh, this is more for like Justin. So, but you would do it right here. Why would you add an instrument to a drum machine? Because now everything that, like if drum, if, if Justin just got hired to do 10 dance tracks, by Friday, it's Monday, he's going to hang out, and I know he's moving, so he's busy. He needs a system to be able to take those 10 tracks and finish them, right? So if he created these construction kits where all the instruments, everything is just ready to go, he just has to open up one instrument, and then he just writes the idea really quickly, then he has a better chance of uh, getting that done. So, so whatever, you, whatever instruments you whatever instruments you load into that designer is what ends up in the kit in your step sequencer. Exactly. Oh, oh well, not in the step sequencer. Remember that you can use the piano roll here. Let me let me exemplify this. You can use a MIDI region or you can use a pattern region with software instruments. Now, they just changed the game. This is something that just happened, so it's going to take some repetition. Trust me. There's two ways to write music now. When we're not talking about audio. Audio is like me recording myself, right? That, that makes sense. But in the world of MIDI, we now have two formats for over, since 1983 to now is a long time, like eight, nine, 40 years or whatever it's been. It's been one way. It's just, it was just the piano roll. It was just like this. And then just now they came out with this new format and it looks like this now. Um, th they're both necessary. There's no way you're going to pull off, uh, you know, a sustainable career, in my opinion, with just one. Uh, you need both because they do different mm -hmm. things. Yeah. You mean step sequencer and MIDI? Yes, you need both. Yeah. Like if you wanted to write modern drums, it's a really good idea to do with this thing. It's, you know, it's just, it just sounds, it's, it's 
it's what they use. It's just that sound, you know. Um, so why not? Why not play the game? Why not uh, work with it rather than against it? Yeah, I was I was actually able to get to it uh, the step sequencer just by um, choosing electronic drum kit, not by a drum machine uh, machine designer. Okay. So I, I chose the just a regular electronic drum kit and then just pressed E and then it pulls up the uh, right and it pulls it up. Um, but I didn't. Um, yeah. but I you wasn't, didn't, you didn't yeah. understand why you got there though. That's what I'm. That that's what I what I want to do. That's my whole aim and my goal. That's why why I get up and I do this. Because I want people to know why they got there, right? So you went electronic drum kit. You selected a kit, but you weren't sure exactly kind of what happened underneath the hood, right? You right. see, so this is what happened here. Yeah. Uh, so what if you did want to write with MIDI, though? Or maybe you start off writing a pattern like this, and I'll just make it simple. Uh, okay. Uh but then you're like, okay, this is great, but now I want to get out of time, you know, because I'm just playing these 16th notes and, you know, then you would convert it to MIDI. Now you still have the same pattern. But now I can do things like, okay, I'm going to move. It's very common in music for, um, in hip hop and EDM for people to move the second and fourth, which is either, it's one of the three or the, se the second and the fourth um, notes and move them slightly off the grid so it sounds a little bit more human. You'll, you'll find this is very prevalent in every modern genre. So then I'm going to move this off the kit. Now, if I wanted to do that inside the, the pattern sequencer, I would have to use the start offset, and it's a whole other thing. But now I've moved it over so it sounds a little bit more human. And these are kind of to the grid. But, um, they, you know, it just depends. It just depends. Um, the way I think of it, last thing is just, I want to write a certain kind of thing. I'm going to use the pattern region just because I know it's going to sound a certain way. Um, or I just want to try something new. That's another reason why I would try it. But with MIDI, I know how to use it. I know when I want to use it. So if you're not sure yet, just study both individually. And I, and I really feel like you'll figure out your workflow. Um, you know, it may be that all you use this for is to write drums. Right. And I don't even care how you get there. What I'm mostly interested in, as you already know, is to get you to the next level and to get you into a flow, right, where you have a relationship to it. Once I get there, then, you know, I, I feel successful in terms of I got you to where you want it to be. But with, without that understanding, it's it's hard. Go ahead. Seems like seems like that uh, that uh, step sequencer definitely has a like a personality, its own its own <laughs> characteristics. You know what I mean? Dif different, you know, as far as creating, as far as creating, you know. I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah, I just, I just want to add that I, I love it so far. For me, it's, it's great. Tell me, um, tell me some of your findings, creatively or whatever. It doesn't have to be musical. I mean, stuff. I'm finding it great for melodic patterns, um, cool. being that, you know, I don't have a ton of music theory or, you know, I can't play piano. Right. It's a great way to just get ideas down quickly. So how are you drafting these? Are you just going like, well, obviously you need to select an instrument first because I have drums. Yeah, so, you know, I'll, pull, I'll throw on, you know, whatever synthesizer I want to use and then I'll create the pattern region. And then I notice, and I can't remember where that is, but you can actually choose different patterns. There's like a menu where you can oh, choose right. different preset yeah. patterns. Mm -hmm. And then I'll go in there and I'll just like, oh, that kind of sounds kind of good, but how can I make it different? And, you know, and then you can go through and like remove notes or add notes. Yeah. yeah. So um, to, to your point, it's, it's wild that you can, um, you can use like Omnisphere or it doesn't matter, whatever it is. And you can use this format. It's like, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. So like if I have a preset, let me, let me uh, quickly just do one more idea. And like logic gives you like a ton of different patterns to start with inside of inside of patterns right but you know i haven't played around with it too much but so far it's been like fantastic and I, I can definitely see myself using it a lot more absolutely let me find something pretty here Hold on. yeah like nice pluck sounds are really good for it yeah thank you all right, so then like um, here's the scale, C major. Let's keep it simple, but you could actually change these as well next week.
But um, um, and by the way, I have no idea what I'm doing right now. Just to be, because like sometimes I feel like people give people too much credit. You know, like oh wow, he's just drafting it so quickly. Here we go. I would have never written that in real life. Like, ever, there wasn't a chance that I would have written. Da -da 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 -da. You know, I just, I don't think of music like that. But this sounds cool. I mean, you can hear the song already, kind of, you know. And then, all right, cool, let's change the velocity values. All right, here we go. Let's have fun with it. Alina, let's change the note of this one. All right, cool. Uh, Mag, let's change the octave of these last two. Just because. Yay, here we go. I have no idea what I was doing again. I'm just trying stuff. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the feel of it, right? Cool. Any other questions? I'll take one last one. I'll be here next week. I don't have anything else. <laughs> yeah, that's good. It's a lot. Um, uh, let me let me post the assignment right now before I forget. And um, thank you guys very much for another sesh. We do this every every Monday. Uh, I'm sorry, every beginning of the month, just to answer these simple questions because you know it's a lot. It's a lot of information. Um, if you need any more help, let me know. Have yourselves a nice week. Good seeing you. And, yeah, thanks, Daddy. Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate thanks, it. All right. Thank you. Bye. 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 Yes. Yeah.